In this video, we're going to look at some more properties of infinite series, which can help us determine if a series is convergent or divergent. So we're going to start with a very famous series called the harmonic series, which is divergent. Harmonic series is simply the sum of all the reciprocals of all the counting numbers. So that series is called the harmonic series. And we're going to show that this series is actually divergent, which is not really obvious because we saw this another series where the terms all got very small as n went to infinity uh, was convergent. So let's look at some partial sums. First partial sum, of course, is just going to be 1. Second partial sum is 1 plus a half. And now I'm going to continue to look at partial sums where the index is a power of 2. So the fourth partial sum is this sum, and the eighth, and the sixteenth partial sum. Now, why am I looking at the partial sums for the powers of 2? Well, let's simplify them a bit. Obviously, the first partial sum is just going to be 1, and the second partial sum is 3 halves. But if I look in the fourth partial sum, these final two terms, so the final half number of terms here, well, they're all both terms are going to be greater than one fourth, so their sum is going to be greater than twice one fourth or half. Let's look at the last four terms of the eighth partial sum. Those four terms, well, these three are going to be greater than one eighth, and so there's four of them, so their sum is going to be bigger than four times one eighth, which again is one half. And finally, the same idea with the last eight terms of the sixteenth partial sum. The first seven of those eight terms are all larger than one sixteenth, so all eight of them add up to something which is bigger than 8 times 1 over 16, which would be another half. So every time I go to another partial sum where the index is a power of 2, I'm effectively adding something which is more than a half. So the first partial sum is greater than or equal to 2 halves, and the second one is greater than 3 halves. The fourth one is greater than 4 halves. The eighth one is greater than 5 halves. And the sixteenth partial sum is greater than 6 halves. So looking at the pattern here, I can say that the 2 to the power of k partial sum is bigger than parentheses k plus 2 times one half, which means that if I take the limit as k goes to infinity of the partial sums, I'm going to get infinity. And so that tells me that the series is divergent. This is very important that we understand that it's not enough for the terms to go to zero. It's required if we want to have convergence. We must have the terms going to zero. But that alone does not guarantee convergence. Look at our two series that we've studied. This was our first example from the previous video. We used partial fractions or just found a pattern for the partial sums to show that this series, the sum from of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n parentheses n plus 1 is convergent, and in fact we found the sum to be 1 fourth. And we just showed that this is the harmonic series, which is divergent. In both cases, if we just looked at the individual terms instead of looking at the partial sums, 
the individual terms go to zero. But in one case, we have a convergent series. And in the other case, we have a divergent series. So what we can say formally is that if we have a convergent series, so if we know that the series is convergent for some other reason, then what must be true is that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n must equal zero. So the terms have to go to zero. However, if the terms go to zero, we can make no conclusion about this series, right? So this is a sequence of terms. If the limit of the sequence of the terms is zero, we can make no conclusion about the limit of the partial sums, which is what determines convergence. So just because we have the limit equaling zero, we can make no conclusion about convergence. We do, however, get a test for divergence. If we're given a series and we find that the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms of the series does not exist, or if the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms of the series is some value which is not zero. The finite or infinite, as long as it's not zero, we can conclude that the series is diverging. Let's look at some examples. We'd like to determine if the series, where we take the sum from n equals one to infinity of two to the power of n plus four to the power of n all over e to the power of n. We'd like to know if that is a convergent series or divergent series. Well, let's find the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms of the series. Now here I have powers in the numerator and the denominator. The largest base is four. So I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom by one over four to the power of n. And why do I do that? Well, after I multiply it out, then in the numerator, I have two over four to the power of n plus one all over e over power four to the n. Now remember e is about 2.7, it's less than three, certainly less than four. So as n goes to infinity, the two over four to the power of n goes to zero e over power four goes to zero. And the only thing that's left is so that is going to zero. That term goes to zero. And I'm just left with one. Well, that's not zero. Remember, our test for divergence says that the terms have to get really small. They have to approach zero as n goes to infinity. So we can conclude that the series is diverging by this test for divergence. Here we have another series. And the terms are six times two raised to the power of two n minus one over three to the power of n. So let's use some properties of exponents first to simplify those terms. So two raised to the power of two n minus one is the same as two to the power of two n over two. And so let's go ahead and divide uh, two into six to get three. And two to the power of two n is the same as two squared to the power of n, which would be four to the power of n. And now I can combine four over n divided by three over n as the fraction four thirds to the power of n. I still have the multiplier of three. And as n goes to infinity, since four thirds is bigger than one, that will go to infinity as well. It will grow 
without bound. And so again, we have a divergence series using our test for divergence. All right, here we have a series, and we're going to use a different index just to practice using a different index. We have the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of radical 2 to the negative k power. We'd like to know if that is convergent or divergent. Well, I can write radical 2 to the negative k power as its reciprocal raised to the positive k power. And remember, anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. So I get this series here, which I can rewrite as a geometric series. It is a geometric series, but rewrite it in our standard form for the geometric series. So our common ratio would be 1 over radical 2. 1 over radical 2 is uh, smaller than 1. So that's a convergent geometric series. So we can say that this series is convergent. In fact, we could use the formula to find the sum, but we're not asked to find the sum. We're just asked to state whether it's convergent or divergent. And we do say it's convergent, but we don't just say that it's convergent. We also give a reason. We say it's convergent since it is a convergent geometric series. So you want to develop that habit because that will be required on any quiz or test that I give you that not only do you state if a series is convergent or divergent, but to give some explanation why do you know that it's convergent? Well, we know it's convergent since it's a convergent geometric series. In our last example, the terms of our series are e to the power of n over n squared. Well, here I'm going to change to x. It's not really necessary, but it just uh, looks more familiar that way. Why? Because I want to apply L'Hopital's rule to calculate the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over x squared. So the derivative of the top is still e to the x, but the derivative of the bottom is 2 to the x. This is still an indeterminate form, so we use L'Hopital's rule again, and now I can see that this limit is going to infinity. So the limit of the terms of my series go to infinity. So again, we have a divergent series by the test for divergence. So our test for divergence is uh, our first test, but it only helps us determine if a series uh, may be divergent. Um, it doesn't really help us conclude that a series is convergent. If the test for divergence uh, fails, in other words, if the limit of the terms does go to zero, I cannot conclude that we have convergence. To conclude that I have convergence, we're going to need to develop some further tests, and that's what we'll do in the next few videos.